Hey guys, welcome back. And we're here at the Music Garage for a day because we've got to get the ceiling installed. So the subcontractors wanna get in here, they wanna start laying the underground work, which would be all the plumbing and uh, radiant heat, all that good stuff in order to get the concrete poured. However, in order for them to do that, I wanted to first get in here and install the ceiling. That way, that way I could use that guy right there, the mega deck and not feel bad about maybe scarring up or making any you know, permanent marks on the finished concrete. So we're gonna get that going today. It's nothing real new. Uh, maybe I'll throw up a time-lapse camera and we'll just watch this process. It is going to be a black ceiling. So I know there's always this debate on whether or not that's gonna be too dark. Don't worry, there's gonna be lots of lights. And if you look closely, you will see lighting already ran. Now there's gonna be a bank of lights and fans running down this middle. You can see them. This is all gonna get insulated with blown in insulation. We'll have, which we're, we've got our lumber right here. We'll make a nice attic access panel over here. This is a second story storage, or I'm not exactly sure what this will be used for, but it'll be a storage-ish room. So it'll have access to the attic space. And don't worry, there's room up there. We tested it to get up and walk all the way down that with your blower and they'll be able to blow an R38 fiberglass into that attic space. So what we're doing is running a four mil vapor barrier on the ceiling. The walls are gonna end up getting a three inch closed cell spray foam. So those will be um, sealed, protected. We'll have our air and water barrier with that weather logic on the outside. We'll get our vapor barrier on our um, insulation because it's closed cell. And then we'll have our vapor barrier up in the ceiling. That attic space will be all nice and vented, especially since we put those um, air deflectors so that the soffits can still breathe up to the ridge vent. So we're gonna, uh, Greg ran to the job site that we, uh, I guess it'd be the cabin in the woods job site to get a circular saw real quick because we didn't bring the tool trailer. We just figured we needed, you know, simple tools to run the ceiling. However, you should always bring your trailer, never fails. You're gonna be without something. So while Greg is off doing that, I'm gonna get up in the lift and continue to run this vapor barrier so that we, when he shows back up, hopefully, I can have most of that done. We can start trimming it out and then getting our steel prepped for installation. So we got the center board done here for uh, where the peak, where the metal is gonna go in and I guess trim out nice. You can see where those lights are. And what we're gonna do now is you'll notice that we've got some, uh, the paper that covers our steel. We got that laid down in the lift because this is a black ceiling. Uh, this steel needs to be covered up or at least protected. We don't want it to get dirty or scratched. So what we do is we lay that lumber down on the lift to support it in between all the ribs. And we're gonna lay it down upside down so that we can then walk on it. So just set up the first piece and you can see now what we've got is in between the ribs, since they're upside down, we, uh, we throw some lumber. And so that way it's nice and solid right here. And then we can walk on that. And every time we pull one off, if we walk on the next one, it's just gonna go up into the ceiling and not do any damage. But we don't wanna walk on it until it's all stacked up. The fact that the electrician went ahead and ran these boxes prior to us installing, it was very important that we communicated the layout appropriately because with the rib steel, we wanted to make sure his boxes landed in the center. Now, I'm hoping, I think everything will be close enough um, we like to let them do that after the steel's up, not because it's easier for us, but because it's a little bit easier to make sure these are exactly where you want them. You can just find the center of a rib profile and boom, cut out your hole and you're done. Versus the way it is here, we gave them a measurement off the wall to start and then every 90 inches they were supposed to set another one. So I'm sure it'll be fine, but just something to think about if you're doing this sort of work. The layout is key. We've got our first sheet ripped we did have to rip it down instead of putting up a full 36 inch sheet that way everything would work out appropriately so all right time to put it up we've got a j channel around the edge we've got j channel up at the peak but at the bottom you'll notice no j channel it's just a what we call a reverse mini angle that is so that the steel can get screwed up and then it'll get another piece of trim when the walls are done because uh, I don't know what the walls are going to be at this point. So this gives us the ability to install the steel at the peak and then not have to fight getting into a J-channel at the bottom. So 
So now you can see a little bit better probably why we do this because if this was a J channel, we would have to get this steel in the J channel while also getting it in the J channel up top. And you can't bend the steel, you can bend the steel and then get it in both, but that's just a pain in the butt and not real necessary. But this is going pretty good. What we're doing is just cutting around these uh, electrical boxes. So we're just using a template. It's gonna get a, a trim ring and everything at the, you know, in the end. You can see this is probably just like an eighth inch off center. Oh well, no big deal. Um, I don't think you'll ever see it once it's done. Did I just say no big deal? So now that we've got the other side of steel going up on the ceiling, right back here is where our attic access panel is gonna be. And instead of cutting that out at the time of installing the steel, what we like to do, we put these uh, marks from the top side. So we put the steel up there and then we go up there and punch a hole uh, about a half inch in from the framing on all four corners. That way we can do all the work exactly where it needs to be done right here later and then trim it out. But for now, what we're doing is making sure that these ribs are lining up from side to side and we're just going to town to finish this thing. We still have to screw, as you can see, like these laps are kind of loose because we still have to screw up here at the peak, but we figured we'd run uh, these line of screws, this line of screws, this steel can just rest right up here in the J channel. And then when we get done doing this side, uh, the nailer row that's right here, you can see it. And this, then we'll run the lift right down the middle, tack everything exactly where it goes, but it's going pretty good. So we wanted to get that ceiling done so we could use the mega deck, make it easy on ourselves. Just would have been a lot harder if we had to use our small um, non-marring scissor lift so it doesn't mess up the concrete but we got it done now, they can do their work. We can come back here and work on exterior. We've got porches to build, and then we've got that smart side to start installing. We've got uh, more standing seam roof that we gotta do on that porch, which we're gonna have a nice um, hip detail to do. So stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, I'm gonna clean up and Greg and I are out of here. One, two, three. Okay, you got bottom. So we finally got our windows in for the building and these are Sierra Pacific windows. First time using them, but I'm already super impressed by them. I knew they were gonna be quality when Greg told me he could barely unload the door. That is also a Sierra Pacific door. That was a heavy door. Well, weight is always equivalent to quality. That's what I'm told. I'm excited to install these. Yeah. You ready? Yep. And go all the way in with the bottom? Yeah? Yep. Okay. Uh, That's not good. No. What are we hitting? The... We're hitting the top. Because it's so big. We can't go in on an angle. Yeah, going straight. Yeah. That's all right. Come out. I mean, I'm going to make it. I, I, I'm, I, you need to come out more. There. You're going to go in and you're going to move those shims. It's all good. It's just the jam extension is so big. You know, it's kind of nice. These windows have this nice covering here and you just remove it after install, which uh, that could help if somebody misses a nail head and hits the window with their hammer. Okay, well, it's perfectly level that way. Let's see, we're pretty much perfect there too. I'm gonna go ahead and set a center nail. I'm gonna check for square. So we're like an eighth inch. I think this side is a little bit high. I'm gonna pull this nail back out so we can adjust that. I think I like that. 69, just over five eighths. 69 and three quarters. I'm like a 16th. I need this to go your way on the bottom. Just curious, what's your... Eight and almost three quarters. Eight and almost three quarters. Okay. That's a good thing. It's a great thing, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the ultimate fear, man, of like cracking a window or something. Now, the one thing to notice is that this weather logic has been sitting here now for over a month. It's been installed. 
The tape has been applied for over a month. Um, no, no tape anywhere that I have seen is even remotely looking like it's gonna come off. It's still stuck very, oh yeah. That's still really good. I think just in general, the board, even where all these nail holes are, there's no swelling. Everything looks exactly like when it, when it was installed. So that's good. So we're gonna be installing Sierra Pacific windows. That's a new window for us. We've never installed them. Um, I actually met them when I went to the International Builders Show in Florida in 2019. And ever since then, been trying to find a project to use them. And this project being what I would consider a more high-end project for us, I thought it definitely was a good place to use this window and it's not disappointing. It looks like a really good window. So one of the cool things about these Sierra Pacific windows is that with the black aluminum clad exterior here, which is gonna give that you know real nice, beautiful look on the outside, well then we go and transition to a full vinyl frame. So that's gonna you know, obviously increase the life, you know, lifetime of the product. It's not gonna rot like a traditional uh, aluminum clad wood window, but we still have our wood interior. So all the windows, the, the actual finishes on the inside are all wood stain grade, and this is all uh, primed black. So it looks, it looks really good, but I think that's a unique feature to Sierra Pacific. In fact, it does say patent here. I wonder if that's what this, um, I wonder if that's what that is. I wonder if this is a patent thing that only they have. I think so, I think that's what he said. Didn't he say that? I think he said yeah. that. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. We got aluminum, vinyl, wood, um, all the right products where you want them. Okay, shims, cart in front of the horse. Where are they at, you got them? No big deal, right? One, two, three. Use your back, not your legs. Always. Okay, tip in. One. Two, three. All right. Okay, I'm good. You don't have to hold it, I mean. Okay. I'll get it squared up now. 69, just a hair over three quarters, which I believe is what they all have been. I thought we won. 69 and just a hair under, so yes. That's just what I figured I needed to go this way, just a hair. Sixty-nine three quarters. Sixty-nine three quarters. Level. Plum, and you look good. No, I think so. Yep, I'm golden, man. I like it. I think I like it. So it's definitely important to not only make sure that your window is sitting level and plum, but square is important, especially when you go on the inside and you start doing your interior finishes. If uh, if your window's not square. You know, it might still open up, it might still operate somewhat the way you want it to. However, uh, your interior finishes, when you start trying to put miters together that aren't perfectly square or perfect 45 degrees, it does get a little bit harder to, to actually do that. Which just kind of goes to show that if you spend more time up front doing your prep, it's gonna make things down the road a lot easier. I wonder if the performance of the window is better being vinyl frame. I would think so. I, I bet it has something to do with uh, like um, heat transfer. Heat, uh... I wonder if it's a better than a wood, a wood window. One thing that you want to try to do when you're taping off your windows is you'll see like at the vinyl J trim or the flashing that you can nail your window in the the flange, tape up onto this window here so that you get that connection covered up with some seal tape. And I think that's gonna give you a little bit more protection as well. Now we're only gonna tape the three sides or two sides in the top. And we're not gonna tape the bottom, just like we didn't put any sealant there. We're gonna let any moisture that gets its way, I guess, onto that uh, window sill to be able to work its way out if it wants uh, versus stay in there and do any sort of damage. Even though I feel good because we have um, that tape on the entire bottom of that windowsill, uh, if water does get there by any chance, it's probably gonna evaporate before it has any chance to do any harm. Ready? One, two, three. 69 three quarters.
Well, it feels good to finally get those windows installed after waiting what seems like above normal because of COVID-19. Uh, but it kind of leads us to the next problem, which is our Versetta stone, which now needs to be installed before we can start running any siding above that is uh, is also on back order i'm going to actually probably have to cross state lines to go pick up a couple pallets so that we can start installing that before our siding on the front three walls now this back wall here behind me that's just going to be straight vertical siding with a new product called water screen by lp and it's pretty cool me and greg did a couple tests with it and pretty surprising how quickly it uh, moves water behind your siding so stay tuned if that's something that you're interested in something that uh, you've never seen or maybe you have used water screen in the past but you're looking for a product that's going to be a lot easier to install and maybe even better overall because i think that's what lp's done with this product really just look at this building i don't even know if it needs siding at this point i think it looks pretty darn cool with the blue and all that black i don't know we'll probably have to go ahead and put some siding on since that's part of the contract but it looks really refined and really clean and i'm going to leave you with that tomorrow the concrete contractor is actually going to be installing all the floor on the inside they've got all the radiant tubes laid down all the underground plumbing and electrical has been done and this project's going to really start shaping up once this outside grade work is done we're gonna be able to start working on building the porches. And that's what's really gonna make this building pop out, I think, is once we get our porch details done and this siding starts going up. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Hopefully you guys are as interested and excited as I am and you wanna stick around. We'll catch you guys on the next video. I appreciate the support.